If you've got one of these naked GoPros, then you may know that there is a way to start and stop recording by using one of the aux switches on your controller. And that's sort of what we're gonna talk about in this video. But even if you don't have one of these naked GoPros, this video is gonna serve as a tutorial for a function in Betaflight called PinIO. And it is one of the most powerful, but also sort of overlooked features. I'm Joshua Bardwell. You're gonna learn something today. People are constantly asking me how to set up the start stop recording function for their naked GoPros. Uh, this is not a GoPro, it's an Insta360 SMO 4K, but whatever camera you've got, the steps are the same. They're not exactly the same though. For example, here are the instructions for the Insta360 SMO 4K and it's like, well, what, just solder up the wire and then just do this stuff and then you're good to go, right? But people don't understand why they're doing the things they're doing. And so I'm going to walk you through the steps. So if you want someone to just sort of hold your hand and go through the steps, this is the video for you. But if you are interested in the deeper functionality of Betaflight, this PinIO function is incredibly powerful. And I can't resist the opportunity to give you a little bit deeper of a tutorial. Now, any of these naked GoPro kits, like this is the Beta FPV kit, will have a signal wire that you can connect to the flight controller and you can control with an aux switch to start stop recording. The Insta360 has something extra though. It's got a separate wire that can be used to power the camera on and off. So we're actually gonna be doing two separate aux switches and two separate functions. If you're working with like the Beta FPV board or another board that only has the start stop recording function, that's fine, you're just gonna only set up one. And the first thing you're going to need to do is look at the pinout diagram for your flight controller and choose a pad that is going to be used for this function. You're going to solder that signal wire to a pad on the flight controller and then you're going to do all this CLI based stuff and then it's just going to magically work. Well, at least that's the theory. And the, the pads you're going to want to choose are, you can't just choose any pad not all of them will always work, but most of them will usually work. So it's gonna to need to be a signal pad. Um, UART, TX, and RX pads will usually work. Uh, motor signal outputs will usually work. Now this is an all-in-one flight controller, so the flight controller and the ESC are integrated in one board, so there's no separate motor signal outputs. But if you have a flight controller that has six or eight motor outputs and you're only using four of them, the remaining motor outputs probably could be used for this function. Uh, the LED strip pad will, will basically always work. The five volt and ground pads, no, those are not signal pads, they're power pads. The camera and VTX pads on analog uh, uh, flight controllers will not work. And what else do we have? That's about the buzzer. The buzzer pad pads probably won't work. So we're gonna to need to find some pads here that will work for us. Now on my flight controller, the RT2 pad is used for SBUS from the Cadex Vista. So that is out, that's already in use. And the RX2 and TX2 will also be out because all three of those pads are connected to UART2. So even though only the SBUS pad actually has a wire connected to it, any other pads that are connected to that UART are also out. In addition, the TX1 and RX1 pads are being used by the Cadex Vista for the OSD connection, so that is out. So what does that leave me? Well, we've got these R11 and T11 pads, and those are being used for soft serial. Uh, this is the GEPRC uh, 35 amp all-in-one flight controller, and they only have two UARTs broken out, but in order to give you a third UART or sort of, they, they break out soft serial. There's a very, very good chance that those two will work for me. Uh, the other one that I could consider would be LED strip. However, when I was taking the top plate off this quadcopter, I accidentally tugged on the signal wire that GEPRC ship soldered to LED strip and I lifted the pad and it's yanked off, so that's no good. So we're gonna have to hope that R11 and T11 work. And at this point, I'm gonna take my pinout diagram and I'm gonna make a note that I have the yellow wire, which is signal on R11, or record, let's do that. Record on R11 and power 
on T11. If you're doing like a beta FPV kit with only the record wire, then go ahead and write, make the note anyway, But because we're going to carry that forward. Hey there, folks. Joshua from the future here. We're about to start screwing around with the CLI and resource assignment and all kinds of nonsense. Before you do anything like this, it's a great idea to go to the CLI and type dump all and then save to file and save that somewhere where you can find it again and then clear output history and type diff all and save to file and save that somewhere where you can get it at again. If you want to be just a little more efficient, you can go to the CLI and type resource. For the sake of this video, these things are the things we're going to be screwing around with. And so you could restore your factory resource mappings just by pasting this in. Again, just save that to a file somewhere. Um, but a, the full config dump also has this information. The next thing we need to do is identify the pins on your flight controller that correspond to these pads. And what I mean by that is like, here is, oh, just, you know, a random flight controller that I picked off the internet. And here is the F7 processor that is the sort of brains of the, of the uh, flight controller. And each of these pads that you're seeing here, T1, T2, R1, R2, etc., they go through traces on the circuit board to one of these pins on the outside of the processor. And if we look at the data sheet for an F7 processor, we can see that each of these pins have a certain designator, PF1, PF2, etc. So we're going to plug into our flight controller and go into beta flight configurator and we're going to type resource. And that's going to show us all of the beta flight resources that this flight controller is using and the pin number that is on that resource is on. Now, we don't need to go into all of the resources that Betaflight has in this video. In fact, I've got another video about resource remapping where I go into all these different resources and what they mean. But we do need to identify the resources that go with these pads. And most of the time, the resources you're going to choose are going to be either a UART, a motor output, or LED strip. So motor outputs are designated as resource, motor, and then a number. This flight controller has six motor outputs, uh, so they're numbered motors one, two, three, four, five, six. So if I had soldered my signal wire from my naked GoPro to motor six, uh, that would be the resource I was concerned with. The resource LED underscore strip is the LED pad on the flight controller. Be aware that there is also a resource LED, and that is not the LED pad on, it's LED underscore strip if you're using the LED pad. And then finally for the UARTs, you're gonna choose Serial TX1, that's UART1TX, or Serial TX2, that's UART2TX, or Serial RX1, that's UART1RX, etc. Now, now we've used these two, which are labeled R11 and T11, and those are actually in the ports tab mapped to this soft serial resource. And this is a pretty uncommon situation, but if you do have a flight controller that's broken out soft serial into a pad on the flight controller, and that's uh, what you're using, then it's gonna be Serial TX11. So Serial TX12345-6 is regular UARTs, Serial TX11 is Soft Serial 1TX, and Serial RX11 is Soft Serial 1RX. So for me, we've got R11, and that is my record signal wire, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to write down Serial RX11. That's the resource that is assigned to this pad from the factory. And that is pin number B10. I'm going to write down B10. And Serial TX11 is pin number A00. Okay, so now I know the pin numbers that I'm going to be using. Next, we're going to take a deeper look at Betaflight's pin IO and pin IO box functions. And the general way to think about these functions, that, so like, take a look here, we've got these signal uh, pads. We've got this, some of them are UART, some of our motor outputs and so forth. And I want you to think of those signal pads as having one of two states. They can either be on or off, okay? Like you can switch, you could switch a light switch on or off. Uh, the reality is that those those pads can have different states. For example, motor outputs are not either on or off. They're sending digital data, but set that aside for now. For our purposes, they're either going to be on or off. And just like an aux switch, when we flip the aux switch, the aux switch is on, the aux switch is off. Okay? So the pin IO function lets us make the output state of these signal pads 
be linked to some other Betaflight function. And the Betaflight function that we're going to tie them to in this tutorial is an aux switch, but they can actually be tied to nearly anything else in Betaflight. So for example, here we have a list of what the Betaflight devs confusingly call boxes. Set that aside for a second. They're basically aux modes. Why do they call them boxes? I don't know. So this box is the arming mode, the angle mode, etc. And we could use the pin IO function to tie the output of this signal pad to one of these aux modes. For example, a common use of this function is if you have a, a Bluetooth adapter on your flight controller, then the pin IO function will cause the Bluetooth adapter to shut down when you arm the quad so it doesn't interfere with the quad while you're flying. So we can use that pin IO function to take any of these aux modes and tie that output of that to whether that aux mode is enabled or disabled. Now the next thing we need to know about pin IO is that there are four pin IO resources. And even if we're only going to use one or two of them, when we set them up, we usually refer to all four of them. Okay, so for example, if we input the pin IO box command, you'll see there's one, two, three, four parameters, and that is configuring the first, second, third, and fourth pin IO resource. And the pin IO box command is how we determine which of these boxes or aux modes is linked to which of the pin IO functions that we want to use. So the arming mode has ID number zero, which means that if we wanted to tie pin IO resource number one to whether or not the quad was armed, we would type set pin IO box equals zero. And then we would put 255, 255, 255. 255 means that this pin IO is disabled and it's not doing anything. And that would mean that pin IO number one is, a, is mapped or tied to whether the quad is armed. If we wanted to do that same thing for uh, pin IO two, we would make the second one of those be zero. And now pin IO2 is going to turn on and off when the quad arms or disarms. Now, if we want to tie the pin IO mode to an aux switch, we're going to use ID number 40 through 43. And those are going to create modes in the Betaflight modes tab, user one, two, three, and four, and let us use aux switches to flip those on and off. So in my case, I need two user modes because I'm going to have one aux switch to start and stop recording and one aux switch to power the Insta360 SMO 4K on and off. So what I'm going to type is set pin IO box equals 40, 41, 255, 255. So my pin IO one is going to be user mode one. My pin IO two is going to be user mode two. And then pin IO three and four are not going to be used. That's what the 255s indicate. Now, if I go to the modes tab and I look at my modes, at this point, I should see that I have a user one and a user two mode. And those were created by that change that I made to the pin IO box. When you set pin IO box and use ID 40, 41, 42, and 43, that creates modes user one, user two, user three, and user four here in the modes tab. The next thing I need to do is decide which switch or switches on my controller are going to control these functions. And I think the way I'd like to try this is to have up be camera off, middle be camera powered on, and then down be the record and stop recording function. So let's say that my record function is going to be user one and my power function is going to be user two. And then we're going to take user one and add range and flip that aux switch and user two and add range and flip that aux switch. So now both of those are linked to aux two, which is assigned to that aux switch, which is not a topic for this video. I'm going to assume you already know how to set up an aux switch. If not, link in the video description to a tutorial. And then let's see, we want the middle position to be power. Power is user two. And we want the down position to be power because we don't want we don't want the camera to power off. So middle and down position is going to be power, and just the down position is going to be record, and then up position is going to be power off and save. Now the last thing I need to do is to tell the flight controller which pads I have soldered the wires to that are going to be like handling these functions. And again, I'm going to go back to this diagram where I wrote down that record 
was on pin B10 was user one and power was on AOO was user two. So I'm gonna to go to the CLI and I'm gonna type resource pin IO one, which is user one and the pin is B10. And I'm gonna type resource pin IO two, which is user two. I'm gonna type the pin number that I wrote down here, AOO. Now you'll notice that Betaflight is warning me that Serial RX and Serial TX are already on those pins. Uh, and so we may need to get rid of those. And we're gonna do that by typing resource motor six none. So there's motor six, we're gonna get rid of that. Resource Serial RX 11 none. And then here's motor five and serial TX11. Resource motor five none. Resource serial TX11 none. Serial RX11. Oh, I typed it wrong. And then type save. Now this may be more depth than some people want, but I wanna show you what's really happening here. So I'm going to take my multimeter and put it into DC volts and I'm going to measure voltage on this outer pad, the yellow wire, which is my record uh, function. And what you should see is that it is at zero volts. It's at ground potential. And when I flip this switch to activate user mode one, it is now outputting at 3.3 volts. That's positive signal uh, signal uh, level for this flight controller. So we are just controlling the output of that pad from sort of zero to one by flipping that switch. And the camera will then interpret that as turn on, turn off, and so forth. One more thing before we finish up, and that is that your flight controller may come with some pin IO functions predefined. The two cases where this is most likely to happen is if your flight controller has Bluetooth on board, then it probably has a pin IO function to shut the Bluetooth adapter down when you arm the quad. And if your flight controller has a real pit switch, if, you're, if it has, uh, can switch the power of the video transmitter on and off, uh, then it probably has a pin IO function defined for that. Before you dive into this, you're gonna wanna do like they show here on the Betaflight Wiki and type get pin IO config and get pin IO box. And if you see that your pin IO box is equal to 255, 255, 255, 255, that means that nothing is predefined and you can just go ahead. But if your pin IO box is set to anything other than 255, you're gonna to wanna to leave that alone. So for example, in this situation, pin IO box is set to zero, 255, 255, 255, 255. That means the first pin IO mode is tied to the arming of the quad and the last three are undefined. So if you wanted to set up user mode one and user mode two, you would leave this first position alone and you would do set pin IO box equals zero and then 40, 41. Those are user mode one and user mode two and then 255, which is uh, no function. Mm, got all that? I hope that this has given you a sense of the potential power of the pin IO function and an understanding of how to set it up. Just to recap the process for you, determine which pad on your flight controller you're going to use for your signal wire output. Find the pin number that goes with that pad using the Betaflight resource command. Then use pin IO box to set up, to map that to one of your user modes user one, two, three, or four. Set up your aux mode and a switch on your controller to activate or deactivate that and then solder up your wire and you're good to go. And if you're interested in more advanced things like tying uh, one of the user modes to uh, arming or one of the other aux modes, you certainly can do that using the pin box function. That's all documented here. And I'll put a link to that in the video description. That's gonna do it for this video though. Uh, thank you so much for watching and happy flying. You guys, I don't know where I am, and I, I don't know what's going to happen, but if I don't make it out of this, I just want to know that you subscribe to my channel, or, or maybe join my Patreon, or, or click, one of, click one of these videos I picked out for you. <laughs>